Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back once again to TransWest Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love. Um, today, I'm gonna be talking about a, uh, it's a Canyon Star 3927 floor plan, which is the toy hauler model. So really, there's, there's kind of two unique areas of the coach. So I'm gonna start up front, then we'll do the walk around outside, then move to the, to the garage area. Before we get started, let me give you my contact info. If you want to reach out to me, here's my desk number and self, uh, my email. If you want to call or text on my cell phone, that number is 970-631-0083. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, let's go ahead and get started. We're right up front. A couple of things in the dash I want to talk about. Uh, now this is a front end diesel and I'll talk about that more when we get outside. You have a Cummins 6.7 engine. but a couple of things that, that I get asked quite often, um, especially about leveling, and I want to show you something here. When you're leveling your coach on auto, and we've got quite a slope right here, if you just hit auto level, by the time all four jacks come down, and then it corrects, and it corrects again, before you know it, your front tire's off the ground, and your step is, you know, a foot in the air as you're, as you're coming in. But you can you can actually level these manually which is what I did today now the common uh, you know uh, theory on slides and levelers you want to open your slides first we pull in we've got a slope in two directions one going back front and one going left to right but when I run those slides out I'm relatively square so they go out easy. Then when I level, I might be tweaking the frame a little bit. So I recommend you run your slides out first and then you level. And like I said, this one I auto leveled today. And basically all you're doing is pushing one of these buttons. In fact, the, the left to right one, maybe you can get a shot of the front a little bit. And you can see how I am tipping this coach left to right right now. I can do the same front and back. The reason I do this is I don't like to have my front tire three or four inches off the ground. And it used to be with the old refrigerators and the coolant they had, if you weren't dead nuts level, you had a problem with that. You could burn them out because the Freon didn't flow. This one actually has an electric refrigerator, but even the, uh, the RV refrigerators, they run on a chlorine-based solution now it's much easier to get that to flow. So being exactly level isn't as important. So one of the things you wanna learn is how to manually use this uh, equalizer leveling system, and it's not difficult at all. So that's one of the first things I wanted to talk about. Uh, as long as we're here in the dash, very simple dash, by the way, uh, I do have a phone charger right here. There's one on the other side for the passenger. And you can see just simple, uh, uh, battery boost, our lights. We do have a single stage exhaust brake on this. And again, this is a 6.7 liter Cummins diesel. Um, another thing on, on the Canyon Star, these are actually manual. Uh, you have a, a blackout and then a day shade. So when I'm driving, you know, not being all that tall and having to stand up to reach it, I usually have this shade at a level I can reach so I can drop it down. And another thing, we've got visors here. And uh, I wanted to point out a little thing. I have uh, people call quite often and uh, say they can't get their, their visors all the way down. And I'm gonna show you why that is right now. So, and then that one goes up. So. Whenever you've got the key on, or whenever you're running, they don't want that visor to drop down and block your vision. So it stops right there automatically. Same with your, uh, with your nightshade. People say, I, I can't get it closed all the way. And uh, so many times it's just understanding the system. This is a safety, so when you're driving, something can't happen that would lower those shades. As soon as I turn my ignition off, I can lower that all the way. So that's another question I get quite commonly that, uh, you know, once you understand why 
that little safety is built in there, it makes sense. So let's go ahead and get this put down. Uh, nice navigation screen here. I'm not going to go through it too much. We've all seen these before, but uh, you have one for navigation. You have another one for your backup monitor. And uh, we don't have anything on right now. If I turn this on or put it in reverse, that would come on automatically. And again, very simple dash here. This is your uh, air conditioning and your heater, your overhead fans, which uh, kind of blow on the windshield, will keep the fog from building up on a, on a humid day. Um, on the passenger side here, I like the fact that both these swivel, and that's, that's true in almost every Class A. But this becomes part of the living area. Our TV's over here by the dinette. So this is a great spot for watching it. You turn both these around, you've got room for six or eight people if it's raining and you get cooped up inside. One thing about this coach, 3927 is almost 40 feet long, but we've got 10 foot of garage in the back. So virtually we're living in a 30 foot Class A motorhome, which is actually kind of on the small side. But there's a lot of room and a lot of storage here in this 30 feet. And then that 10 foot garage in the back is just a big bonus. So let's go ahead and, and look at some of the other features. First of all, you probably noticed we've got a couple of Ottomans. Uh, this little table here, uh, it's made, you can flip this over and use it as a footstool or maybe use it, you know, like a little coffee table right there. We have two of those. This here happens to be a jackknife couch. And for people that don't know what that is, a jackknife just pulls up and then lays down flat. You do have storage under here. You can see that uh, there's a cushion under there. That cushion actually fills in the dinette when you're making it for a sleeper and it's not even been opened up and used yet. This is a used 2021 with 8,200 miles but uh, very lightly used. It's really a great looking coach. Over on this side we do have the uh, the uh, dinette booth and there's a little lever here if I can find it there it is once I release it it pushes down quite easily and uh, this you know generally you're going to want to move your cushion here to get it on the cleat but I wanted to show you something here oops excuse me, about these uh, storage. So under your cushion, first of all, maybe get a shot back here, Jody. There are a couple of seat belts, and you do have three seat belts behind the couch, so you could actually put seven people in seat belts here. And you notice there is a pull-out storage here. Uh, one of the things about these storage, it makes it nice and convenient, but you can see you lose some, some room on the sides. And with that rack, you lose a little bit of height. It doesn't seem like a big deal when this is closed, but uh, every once in a while we get coaches that, that don't have this pullout. And I don't mind them because it gives you more storage underneath. But that's how you would convert this into a sleeper uh, between your dinette, your jackknife couch, you have a queen bed in the bedroom, so you can sleep six in here, and then there's room to sleep four in the back. So if you're coaching a youth softball or baseball team, you can take the whole team and the coach, sleep 10 people in here. All right, let's show you a little bit of the storage. Up here, I like this bank of cabinets. For one reason, they put this second shelf in. How many times are you going to have a box or something that's that tall for storage? It's more convenient for me to have that second shelf. Over here, as you walk in the door, you have a lot of your uh, uh, controls and monitors for the unit. This is your uh, front slide out switch here, battery disconnect, all of our uh, tank monitors. Uh, right here, see we've got about 25% LP gas. Uh, if you want to turn on your ACs, and I do have them both on right now, and the generator running since it's going to be 100 degrees in Colorado today. Thought I'd cool it down a little bit. Uh, and then uh, 
Also, you've got your auto gen start. Now, I'm not going to go over this real lengthy. I think in, in my next video, I'm going to have Bill Habercorn with me to go over a lot of the electronics and a lot of the issues and questions people have when they don't know if it's user error or a problem with the system. So I'm going to go over the auto gen start, but suffice it to say, I can set this at, say, 12.1. Uh, your batteries drop that low it's going to start up automatically, charge your batteries. But let's say I have pets I want to leave inside when I'm going on a hike. I can also set this according to the temperature. So if it hits 75 degrees in here, it'll uh, trigger the air conditioners to come on. The air conditioners won't come on if you're dry camping until that generator starts. So you can program all of that right here. Great feature. Most of the, the newer motorhomes certainly in a diesel level, have that auto gen start. Okay, moving around over here, we've got some nice storage and, uh, you know, pantry space and everything. Keep in mind, this is a 30-foot motorhome that we're talking about. This gives you a lot of room for your canned goods and food and items like that. And then I'm just going to open this door and let Jody get in there and take a look. This is maybe I wouldn't call it a drawback but one of the things you put up with with this toy hauler on a smaller living quarters you don't get as big a bathroom and you don't have two bathrooms but it's certainly comfortable enough for the average person let me open the shower and let you peek in you can see there is the teak seat there it's a radius shower and it does have the skylight overhead. So if you're 6'2", six, 6'3", six, you've got plenty of room to get in there and shower. If you play in the NBA, let me show you a different coach. And then one other thing while we're in here, I always like to point this out about Numar. Well, first of all, a little more storage, got a nice medicine cabinet, we have some room down here for toilet paper and towels and so forth. Another little cabinet here. This is a cabinet that I like to point out. This is the heart of our electronics. This box has all of our 12 volt breakers. They're all labeled. If you've got an air conditioner that's given you an E7 code, come back here and check and make sure the breaker for that air conditioner is on. Over here, we've got our, our uh, 12 volt fuses. You do get some spare fuses, and you get a little template right here that tells you what everything does. So, Numar, they really think things through well. They design this to make it easy. Most of us aren't versed in uh, electronics or electricity, and you know, to replace a fuse is one thing, but to be able to track it down is important. The way they set this up, it makes it easy for you to kind of diagnose if there's problems yourself. Okay, over here in the kitchen area, we do have some nice cabinets here, again with that second shelf, which comes in handy. We have a true double sink. And this is a stainless steel undermount sink with residential style fixtures. Big enough here to, to get your big uh, pots and pans in when you're cleaning. And then over here we have a true induction cook surface. So this runs off our batteries and inverter. Uh, same as our refrigerator by the way. And they become so efficient they don't use a lot of power and this is removable you can unplug it take it outside under your awning and uh, you know cook outside if you'd like to you do have a convection microwave and this is a rather large one and then underneath here we've got some nice deep storage drawers you can see some of your trays for the microwave. Uh, another thing that I'll point out, a lot of people complain about a rattle while they're driving. 
First thing I'm going to do is take that microwave tray and any racks you have out and put them someplace where they're not going to bang. That's a lot of times what the issue is. If you notice, these are all soft closed drawers. And you've got three big, deep drawers. Great place to keep all your uh, pots and pans and utensils. You have four smaller drawers here. And again, even these smaller ones are all soft clothes. Three, I guess. That bottom one's not a drawer. And then over here, you do have room. Uh, they, they put a trash can in here for you. You got some storage underneath for your cleaning supplies and so forth. And then a little compartment here for scrubbies or whatever you want to keep in there. So very convenient kitchen. Uh, when you cover the sink and the uh, stove, you do have a lot of counter space here. There is access underneath from right there also. We didn't look in these compartments, but we do have a little bit more storage here. And you've heard me mention it before. I like the way that Numar they will give a little contour with their cabinets. It's not just a flat bank all the way across. And these are all wood, no wrap styles. It's 100% hardwood cabinets. They do a beautiful job. Plus, you notice we have the hidden hinges and strut. So when you close that, it's a very clean look. Anybody who's ever tried to stain kitchen cabinets and get the little accents in these grooves, it takes a real craftsman to do that. So uh, I give credit to the people at Numar that actually build these. Um, and then just a couple more storage compartments I'll show you before we move to the back. We have them on this side. Right here we have our Wi-Fi Ranger. So this will boost your cell signal or, you know, your... Uh, if you're trying to work on the internet, uh, you've got the, uh, the Ranger there to help you out. And we do have a nice, it uh, looks like a 39-inch TV over the, uh, the uh, front cab area. We have another one over the dinette. And again, with this couch, the Ottomans, the uh, passenger seat turning around, it makes a great comfortable area for watching TV at night. Okay, before we go outside, let's just move into the bedroom real quick. Now again, keep in mind, this is the equivalent of a 30-foot motorhome. So you're going to get a queen bed instead of a king bed. But again, in true Numar fashion, they designed this with great storage underneath. And uh, nice strong struts. They hold that bed up without any problem. Each side of your bed, you do get a little cabinet down there. And there is a... a, a you know, a little tabletop here if you've got a sleep machine. Up underneath, you've got a couple of your, uh, your uh, LED uh, light switches right here so you can turn on and off your bedroom lights while you're laying up underneath. And another nice feature is we have two windows, functioning windows with screens, so you can open that up and get a cross breeze. And then, of course, some more storage up here. And these are deep. You've got a lot of room. I guess if I was using a sleep machine, I might put it up here and plug it in, and then there's a place to run your, uh, your hose through right here. On this side, we do have a good size wardrobe storage. Looks like the previous owners left their outdoor mat there. And then down below, we have, again, some deep storage drawers or tall storage drawers up on top. It's not as deep of a compartment. But down below, these are very deep, and they give you a lot of room. Got a third one over there, and then a little compartment here for your video components. Now this unit does have a, a DVD, probably a Blu-ray player. Uh, in 22 and as we go forward, you're not gonna see that very often. 
Uh, so many people are using the streaming services that the RV manufacturers have stopped putting DVD players in, but you will always have your connections there if you want to add one. So we're going to go around outside, but I'll just give you a peek here. This is the bonus when you get the toy hauler is this 10 foot garage. And there's a lot to show in there, so I, I'm going to do that when we open the door outside. So let's move back outside now. Sorry if it uh, seems a little bit disjointed today, but there's a lot to show and some definite different areas. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this as we go outside. I'm actually going to shut off my generator so we don't hear it. And that, I can do it right there. I can also do it up on the panel. Now, one thing I, I noticed uh, the awning shut, the reason it did that is because I turned my ignition on. And it's just a little safety, safety that you don't drive off uh, with it running. So let me get this out. Let me get my ignition off. Well, I must have a fuse or a breaker that shut off. I'll, uh, I'll have to look into that when we get done here. Let's move around this coach. First of all, you do have a propane heater, and that is a very large 25, uh, what is it, 25 pounds, which is a 106 gallon tank for your propane. Some nice storage here. This is your inverter. Reset buttons are easy to reach. Over on this side, a couple more compartments. You can see we've got a central vac here. These are our hoses. And you can actually plug it in outside and clean out your uh, your outside compartments. Another little storage compartment there. And then we have two more back here. One thing I like about the rear cap on the Canyon Star, it doesn't look like a toy hauler. You can't even see the handle to lower that. We're gonna come back in just a minute and drop this down, but you also have a ladder inside. You can hook it up here. You could leave it hooked up here while you're driving, but because we're gonna be using this tailgate, I left it inside. Let's review the, uh, the driver's side compartments before we go into the garage. Over here we've got our power cord, 50 amp power cord. You've got enough room in there to store some other items also. And then one of the beauties of the toy hauler is your fueling station. So over in this compartment is our master uh, switch to turn it on and off. Uh, you know, if you're pulling ATVs or motorcycles, you might want to have your own fuel. You do have a little ground clip here. It's a, for static uh, electricity, so you can ground it. And when you turn that pump on and are filling your, uh, your tanks, you don't have to worry about sparks. This is sewer hose storage. 
And I see they've already got the heavy duty sewer hose and a box of gloves there for you. Remember, you're not a true RVer until you've had poop on your shoes when you're dumping your tanks. Water compartment here, uh, very convenient. Outside shower, you've got a switch for your pump right here. Your water valve, now this is if you're gonna power fill your, uh, I think it's a 75 gallon fresh water tank. You can do it here, or if you're running off uh, city water that you would hook up right here. And then this, you also have a sewer rinse and a black tank rinse right here. Whole house filter. Um, one other thing I'm gonna talk about, and we'll get into this more next week with Bill. One of the problems or questions I get, you know, we're camping the first night and we just can't get water pressure. It's just kind of spitting out. What's happened nine times out of 10 is one of these valves is in the wrong position. It's not allowing it to build up pressure from your 12 volt pump. You know, there's a couple of low point drains here. If one of those are open, you're just gonna spit that water out all the time. But if you have this in the city water fill position to where you're putting water into your tank from a hose and you don't switch it, when you turn, out that, turn on that pump, you know, you're just pumping that pressure out that same hose. You have to close that valve. So if that happens to you, get out and check your, uh, your valve positions because nine times out of 10, that'll take care of it. Okay. On this compartment, we've got our water heater behind here, and you can see we've got our uh, winterization kit. So it's very easy if you are going to winterize this yourself. And then uh, I like this storage compartment because it's two doors long, uh, it's open in the middle, you've got a lot of room there. You know what? Did we. Uh, I don't believe I talked about the generator. I must have missed it. And uh, anyway, it's an 8.5 generator. Oh, it's in the front compartment, my mistake. Excuse me, an 8,000 watt generator. And this is the quiet diesel. So it will, uh, it runs off your fuel tank. So you're not gonna run out of fuel if you're dry camping. Now you have three air conditioners on this unit. You may only be able to run two at a time. So there's two up in the living compartment, one back in the, uh, in the garage area. So if they're all on, it's gonna shed. You're probably only gonna run one of those ACs in the front compartment at a time if you have the garage one on also. And here are our AGM batteries. That is on a nice slide out tray. So it makes it very easy to change them or if you ever have to get in there for any reason. And then this last compartment is our def fill. While we're up front here, again, here's our stock number, 5U211023. And one of the things that makes this unique, the fact that it's a front end diesel. Generally, the front engines are on a gas coach. And, uh, you know, there used to be, there still are some companies that make toy haulers on that Ford chassis with the old V10, or now they've got the V8, the 7.3 liter. And the Ford engine is a great engine, but you don't get the torque that the 6.7 diesel does. Now we're on a Freightliner chassis, and it's an XC series chassis with a, a 6.7 liter, 340 horse Cummins diesel, and you have about 700 foot pounds of torque. The beauty of this setup, when you're comparing it to say a gas coach, number one, heavier chassis. This is a 30 pound GVW chassis, and you're about 26,000 pounds empty. So you've got 4,000 uh, pounds of carrying capacity, and you also have 6,000 pounds of towing, where a gas coach typically is only gonna give you 5,000. So we're not jumping up to the big engine diesel, but it does give you the ability to put a couple motorcycles or ATVs in the back and still get up Eisenhower Pass without dogging it. Uh, one thing about the front diesel, 
it's not as easy to access the engine. There is a compartment through the top, but you can see right here, you've got your oil fill, your oil dipstick, your transmission. This is where you fill it and it is your dipstick. Um, fluids for your, your washer fluid, power steering fluid, radiator fluid. It's all accessible right here. So the things you need to check while you're going down the road are here for you. And uh, like all the, the diesel engines, you do have your little pressure gauge. This is, uh, it's actually monitoring the air pressure being pulled in through your air cleaner. As it, you know, as that plunger rises, it's telling you that your air cleaner is getting dirty and you want to get in there and change it. One of the most commonly overlooked maintenance items is that air filter. Okay, let's move back around to the garage and get to the, to the good part of this coach. So if you pulled up behind one of these and you don't have your ladder on the back, you don't notice these little plugs for the ladder, you might think this is just a regular motor home. There's no way to get in the back. The handle is hidden in here. There's a little safety release. And they've got a couple cables on the side to assist going up and down and those are really strong cables. So here we go. First off about this ramp. If you notice there's a transition here, a little hump in the ramp. The reason they do that, if you've got a real low riding bike or something you're trying to get in here, it's nice to have that transition angle. If you've got a straight ramp that meets a flat floor, that's going to be where you bottom out, right at that joint. So the way they contour this, you can get the low riding uh, Harleys and so forth in here without any problem. This door is rated for a thousand pounds per tire up to four tires. So basically it means if you've got an ATV or a real heavy golf cart that weighs 4,000 pounds, you can get it up this door. Now, your garage capacity is less than 4,000 pounds, but maybe you just want to stick something in there to store it at night. You're probably not going to pull it with 4,000 pounds in the garage. Let's move inside and let me show you a couple of the features. First of all, before you come in, step back there and let me demonstrate this. We have a nice screen here. And it is electric, so if you're back here eating, if you set up for the night and you just want to get some nice air pulling through, you've got a screen that comes all the way down. Uh, that's far enough, I'll run it back up. So what we have here is a 10 foot long by 8 foot wide garage. As I said earlier, this is the ladder and you could leave that on the back while you're traveling if you want, if you're using this room for your mountain bikes or motorcycles or something like that. This room, not only does it have two queen beds that I'm going to lower in a minute, it's got its own air conditioner and it also has its own fantastic fan. I'm going to turn that on right now. These things are great for pulling air through and uh, you can set it at a certain temperature just like your AC where it'll open up. You also have a rain sensor on it so if it starts to rain it'll close. And then you do have windows here. The top ones do open up. There's a screen there. You got another one over on this side and again you know, they give you these, these nice blackouts for night when you're trying to sleep. And another thing that I like, you've got two vents. One is up there, one is down here. If I'm traveling 
and I've got something with gas in here. I'm going to open this one, and I'm not going to jump up and do it, but I'm going to open it that way. And this one I open the opposite way. So you can see how I can pull air in there and out here. It'll help keep the fumes out. Also with that fantastic fan, your windows that open, you can get a lot of air flowing through here. And that's really a nice feature. Uh, it does have its own door here. And uh, I don't know if you might want to step kind of in the doorway or maybe on in this doorway. I'm going to lower the, uh, the bed now and talk about a few things there. First of all, get a shot in here and let me explain what we've got. These are tie downs for your track system. So if you're carrying mountain bikes or lighter items, you can tie it down to this floor track. You know, if you've got a, a big heavy Harley, you probably got a wheel chalk and something else in there. And you also have four pins here. These have to do with your bed and your dinette table that I'm gonna go over in a minute. And then uh, TV remote, and then the remote for the door. So as I lower this, bed. Let me show you. Get, get a shot right here. I hate to keep moving you around, but I want to talk about these plates and what they are, and you're going to see it in just a minute. This is a movable plate. You can see there's some holes in here, and this is the stop for the top bunk. So if I want it to raise it a little bit or lower it a little bit, all four tracks have this on it. And the reason you might want those pins, when this is all the way up, there's holes that I can pin it in so this bed would not drop. Only uh, the lower portion would come down. So you can see, that's what those stops are for. So if you're sleeping two levels and you want a little more room on the bottom one, you can have this stop up here a little bit higher. I think I'm going to have to flip my ladder down to let's see if that'll run all the way down. Well, there it will. So again, two queen beds, but this bottom one is also a dinette and it's very easy to convert. You actually have a leg under each one here for extra support. As it's coming down, you drop that leg. And you can see why I might want to pin this up on the top. If I'm going to be sitting here and having lunch, or you got your kids back here, you don't want this right on top of their head. But you do have a nice big table right here. And you can see there are three uh, pedestals. There's three spots there. So when you put it in, it is very heavy duty. And then right here, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a ladder for the bunk beds so the kids can get up here. But when you think about it, you know, not only do you have the nice living quarters up front, but you've got room for four adults to sleep back here. You've got another table. If you are taking a big group with you, it's nice to have this room be so versatile, to have its own air conditioner, to have the fantastic fans, the ability to sleep four people, even more if you wanted to put a mattress on the floor. So this is the beauty of the toy hauler. You can load this up with about 4,000 pounds of cargo. Uh, you know, if you're driving over to Moab for the weekend and just going to camp out on the Slick Rock somewhere, you've got a unit that you can be self-sufficient for probably a week or so. Uh, you do have a generator if your batteries are running low. You can leave your pets in here and the air conditioner will kick on. It's just a great unit. So uh, again, the toy haulers are kind of a unique product. They're not for everybody, I realize. But if you do want to get something and, and have the ability to not only, you know, maybe put a motorcycle in here, but put a trailer or a small boat behind you, you can tow all of your toys and, and all of your friends and have a place to stay when you get there. Uh, what else? I always finish these and feel like I've forgotten something, but uh, I think that's going to be about it for today, folks. Once again, this is a Canyon Star 
3927. It is a used 2021 with 8,200 miles. My name is Mark Love. If you want to contact me, please reach out uh, on my cell phone, text, or call. That number is 970-631-0083. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Trans West. And uh, like always, drive care, have your trails, my friends.